Hey YouTube, it's Curtis with Olympus Reptiles and today I'm going to show you just different sizes of rats and some uh, mice basically from the smallest up to the biggest and just kind of like what they're called and then this is going to be a two-part video. Matt is going to go and show you basically those sizes and then what uh, snakes those kind of fit with so what you would feed those sizes to what snakes. So first let's start over here and we're going to show you um, some mice. We have these three racks here are mice. Um, so mice basically first start out really, really small, and this is going to be a pink. This is a really, really small. This is about like maybe a day or two old uh, pinky mice. Um, and then basically they have a fuzzy, which is a little bit bigger than this. And then the next one would be kind of like a uh, hopper to where they're, they're kind of like a little bit bigger. They're running around. Um, they have their eyes open. And they call them a hopper because they hop around a lot. Um, then up from that would be kind of like, you know, like an adult mouse. Be something kind of like these guys here. Mice are pretty cool. They come in a bunch of different colors. And then up from that would be basically kind of like some of our breeders when you start looking at, you know, basically just the bigger ones. These are ones that have been around for a while. Um, next. We're gonna go over some uh, of the rats. So we're gonna start right over here, and we're gonna start with the pinky rat, which is gonna be something kind of like these guys here. They're really, really small. Um, these ones are probably about a day or two old. Um, they start out about five to seven grams, and you know the pinkies will go up to about 12 grams. And once they get up to 12 grams, then they start to get like some fuzz on them. These are going to be like the fuzzies. This one's probably around 15 grams or so. His eyes are still closed, um, but the, you can kind of see that they start to get like a little bit of a pattern on it. You can kind of tell what color this one's going to be. Um, the next one up, you get something like this, which is more of kind of like a pup. Um, the ears are still back. The eyes are open and they're crawling around a lot more. These ones are probably, you know, more in the 20 um, grams. You know up to 30 um, then you can get some that are a little bit um, bigger um, something kind of like like this one here would be more like the ears are kind of up more would be more kind of like a ween and these ones would be kind of like into the 30 gram of rats um, and then the next size here would be the smalls would be just something kind of like this so these ones are going to be a lot bigger uh, this takes about my, from what I've uh, noticed, is about five weeks. So when they get from pinky as a day old up to this takes about five weeks. And they're going to be about 45 grams up to about 85 grams is what, is what considered a small is. And basically that's this kind of size where we pull from their parents and we go and put them in our, our breeder rack. We have a whole, or our, our feeder rack. And then next thing would be the... Um, mediums which are going to be here and i kind of like this one here he has kind of like a little bit of a patch on his eye but mediums are going to be like the 85 grams up and up oops and then they go up to like 150 maybe like 100 to 150 to like 180 grams and then the next ones are going to be the larges which are going to be these here and they get you know a lot bigger um, so the larges are going to be, you know, basically when you get to the mediums, that's when I kind of separate them out from male to female if you don't want them to breed, because that's when they're going to start to breeding. And that's when I, like, if I want to set up a new colony, I'm going to usually set them up with mediums, because then that's a new fresh one, and they can all kind of grow up. And then, um, you, you know, then the larges, then the other size would basically be like the um, adults, like this is going to be more like a jumbo. This is a male um, jumbo. And then they have like, you know, a, like a much bigger jumbos too, like a extra, extra large jumbo. Um, but those would be ones that you would feed like your retics and stuff like that, like your bigger snakes. Um, now I have two snake or two rats that I want to show you that are pretty cool. Um, this one here, these are albinos. If you come here and look at this one right here, you can see that it has the eyes that has a one that's a red and one that's a little bit darker to where you can see like this one here, the eyes are the same color. 
but these are all they're, they're just a you know different type of an albino but this one's pretty cool because his eyes are different colors and then i have um a double recessive uh rat and basically you know a recessive is both parents have to carry the gene to make it express into the the baby and some of the um Recessive genes in rats would be what I'm going to show you is an albino that is hairless. So that one is down here. And you can tell she's pregnant right now. Let's see how, how big she is. But you can tell she's an albino because of her red eyes. And then she's hairless. So that's a rat that's a double recessive. So it'd be kind of like if you had like a albino pie and ball pythons. But um, do you have any questions, Jen? Or I guess uh, I didn't introduce Jen as the, um, running the camera today because Matt is off um, doing other things. Do you have any questions? I do. What's that? How big does your extra, extra large jumbo get? Um, they can get up to a pound. All right, I have no more questions. Um, so, so now we're going to switch over and Matt's going to explain what to match all these sizes to the snake that you're going to feed. So uh, thank you and we'll see you next week. So now it's my turn. Camera guy Kurt's already explained to you the different rat sizes. So now we're going to go through and show you the appropriate size snake for each individual rat size. That does mean that there's going to be some live feeding here. So if you don't want to see live feeding, now is your time to say thanks for the rat size education and step on out. If you don't mind seeing a live feeding, now you're going to stay around. Why do we have to show live feeding in this instance? Well, like I said, we get a lot of, I guess you'd say, complaints sometimes on why do you feed baby mice or why do you feed baby rats, etc., etc. We're going to show you now each and every size of rat and what it's used for to give you an idea of the right size meal for the right size snake. So you can put two and two together. In order to do that, I'm going to have to open the snake and actually feed it. So you can see the comparison and you may actually see the feed. This is not an attempt to show the feed, but it may happen. If it doesn't happen right away, we're going to close it back up. But you've been warned. All right, so let's get to this and let's start with, well, we'll start small. This is like a newborn pink, a really small pink. As a matter of fact, if you look right there, you can still see its milk sac, and you can actually see where it just recently uh, had an umbilical cord attached to it. So this would be a very, very young, young uh, rodent. Now, this, any newborn ball python, for the most part, should be elite to some of your extremely, extremely small ones. This is too small of a meal for when you get to anything with some size. You know, once they hit about 80 grams, this is too small. I do have a few things that were born rather small, that are eating this size, if we can get them to eat. So we're gonna put it in here with this one. Now this is a snake we've been having to start to assist feed because it's just, it was born really small and it hasn't done too great of a job growing, but we're working on it. If it doesn't eat, we'll actually end up assisting it with that meal. So let's step up in size a little bit. Next up would be this guy here. This as you can see, just getting to be fuzzy. Now something I wanna show you this, is this rat still has its eyes closed, its mouth open, it's not gonna bite, it can't hurt. So this is about the biggest rat that you can safely leave overnight with the snake. So if you have a problem feeder, you can put that in, close it up and leave it overnight without any concern that something bad will happen to your snake. So, I'll show you an appropriate size for this. It would probably be, oh, I'll bring this down so you can see it, Kurt. Oh my goodness, actually nope, because i got to do some work in there before I feed you. You have made an absolute mess in there. So we'll come down here, and we'll do this one here. And if you look at that snake, body is about the, <laughs> as big as round as a prey item. So we'll go ahead and drop this in there. Oh, I know, you're so angry. And a lot of that right now is defensive at me. So as long as I'm in here hovering around, that snake is likely not going to eat. So we'll go ahead and, as you can see, this is all just defensive. Close that up. We're going to let it be. We're going to move on to the next size now, which would be this intermediate size. Oh, man, these things are... I'll tell you what, rats are so gross up to clean this spare tub. This is... What would you call this, Kurt? Uh, a rat pup. A rat pup. Its eyes are open. As you can see, it has its teeth developed. It's not very likely to turn around and attack a snake, especially well, right away, but over time it could. So I wouldn't recommend leaving this size in with a snake. But let's go ahead and feed this off and show you what would be an appropriate size you just shed. And see, 
This snake can handle this. I'll show you something else I like to do. As you can see, that tub needs some cleaning, so we'll put that in there. Go get it so I can clean. And here we have an opportunity when it's not paying attention to do the cleaning I need to do. There we are. Good as new. We'll close this back up and we'll go on to the next size. Okay, that will bring us to what we would consider to be one small rat. Now this is a young adult rat, probably not ready to really start breeding or anything like that yet, but this would be a typical small rat. And this can be handled really well by some of your adult males. This is a very appropriate meal for, say, my boy Zeus here. So we'll drop that in for him, see if he'll take that really quick, and then we'll just get in there so I can close this up. Come on. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, you know, if you close it now, the rat's likely to run out and escape on you. Come on. There you go, little buddy. So we'll close that up, because again, we're not necessarily trying to show the feed. Trying to let you see the rat size. This would be a medium rat here. You can see it's bigger than the small. And again, this is more appropriate for some of our females, like this girl here. And again, look at the body size comparatively. And that's what you're looking for. It's about the same width around as the biggest part of the snake. And if you see that's about the same as the biggest part of the rat, you're going to be good. And so we'll go ahead and close this up and see what happens there. Bringing us to our last size, which is a large rat. Now this is for a good full-size female, especially like your breeding females. You know, your, your big girls who are probably on their second year breeding at least are probably taking these. Here's a good example here. Our pied girl. You can see she's, you know, and again, size comparison is right there. For the biggest part of her body, it's about the same size as that. So we'll close that up. That rat gets out really quick before we get off of here. We're going to go back through and check progress. Nothing there yet. That's to be expected. Probably going to have to assist feed that. Next one we did, I think, was a GHI Moho. As you can see here, we do have a successful feed there. Going well. Perfect size for that. You skipped after, one. Which one did I skip? Uh, oh, I did. I did. You're right. This one here still hasn't eaten, but we can leave that overnight. I did just hear a complete thump there. Want to make sure things are good. Yep. Now, here's a trick, okay? Pro trick when you're feeding. Here, rat can't bite the snake. That's no concern. But if you look, that rat is in the water dish. And in my experience, ball pythons do not like to eat out of their water dish. So when you find one like that, if you can get that out of the water dish without disturbing the coil, like so, your chances of a successful feed go up. Arr, get in there. There we go. Ugh, wasn't that fun? Get that urate out of there. <laughs> All right. And then we had Zeus to check. Zeus still hasn't eaten. We'll give him a bit longer. One of the things we do if we have a rodent, we're leaving in there. Usually we go through an order. But a nice little trick is to keep these binder clips. And we stick that right there. That's a visual cue before we leave the room to know that something's still in there. That way we don't forget. And we always come back to it. And we already checked our pied. And we had one more. I believe we tried to feed the lesser pastel. And you can see it hasn't eaten yet. We'll give that a little bit longer as well. And again... To make sure you don't miss something binder clip i also get asked all the time do you feed live do you have a bunch of scarred up snakes do you have a lot of injuries from that and the answer is no we don't the reason we don't is we don't leave rats in there for a very long time if you do that you're going to have issues where you see those horrid horrid pictures it's because the breeder's gone through they fed and they've missed a rodent in a tub and they come back two or three days later as they're checking their animals and there's a live rodent in there and there's a messed up snake that's been chewing on the snake. That's where you run into problems. As long as you're checking and make sure everything's taken care of, you shouldn't really have any major issues. Kurt, anything you want to add? No. All right, guys, so on this video, just for a quick review, you have seen actual rat sizes and heard their names. You've also seen how they fit the snake. So you have a good idea now of what a rat size is and what size snake it goes to visually. All right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next week.